very first impressions that you feel or get. It's not earth. Mm -hmm. Describe it. A rock is porous like lava rock. Mm. But it's a sandy color, not a black color. Mm -hmm. Is that all around you, mm -hmm. the surface? Yes, but if I start to look up, there are, oh, that's it. What's it? It's one of the planets in our star cluster. Mm. And there are humans on this planet, but different than the humans on the earth. Mm, so I want you, before we dive into that, look down at your feet. Do you feel that you have a body? Yes, I have taken on a body. Mm -hmm. And describe what you're wearing on your feet. Mm. Mm. My feet have a cushion underneath them. It's like a sole mm -hmm. of a shoe. Mm -hmm. But it is formed to my feet, just mm -hmm. the bottoms of the feet. There are nothing on top of my feet to constrict it. Mm. What do your feet look like? Mm. They look a little different than humans on Earth, but they are still humanoid feet. Mm -hmm. The toes are a little longer, but they are human. What color feet. is your skin? Mm -hmm. It's like a uh, tan. Mm -hmm. It's not any shade you find on Earth. Mm. It's a it is like a tan. Mm -hmm. You would say it's one of the paint colors mm. at a store. Mm -hmm. It's the color of our skin here based on our atmosphere and our star systems. Mm. So do you experience yourself as male or female? Hmm. Hmm. Need a second because the definition of male and female is more integrated in the species. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You would call me a female because I do bear children. Mm -hmm. But the way we experience masculine and feminine in this life form is more balanced and whole and complete. We do not see ourselves separate. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's nice. And what are you wearing today? What what kind of clothes are you wearing, if any? Mm -hmm. I am wearing a, a, what you would call a dress mm -hmm. or a smock. Mm -hmm. It is made of a material that is not found on earth. Mm -hmm. It is a material that forms to my body. Mm -hmm. But it has its own mm, energy or intelligence oh. or awareness. Uh -huh. And so it can morph and change on me depending what environment I am in and what is needed. How 
humans have to change clothes is considered very funny because what we wear simply is like a second skin. Mm -hmm. It changes as the needs change. Mm -hmm. It also provides feedback. Mm. On the environment around you? Yes. Uh huh. How does that feedback impact you? Mm. What does it provide you? The fact that it can also provide that feedback. What is it giving you? Mm, it is more of just a interrelationship and a connection and just like well just like the plants on earth would give oxygen and you give back carbon dioxide if all humans were to be aware of how they are constantly interacting with and shaping their environment and their environment is shaping them it is not so much of a plus and minus, it is just more of a beautiful way of being and interacting. Mm -hmm. But if I were to answer your question directly, it does provide feedback on potential needs mm -hmm. or situations internal to my body and mm -hmm. external to my body. Mm -hmm. So I can become aware of if there is something that I need to take action on mm -hmm. or something I need to allow. Mm -hmm. As I interface with other beings on this planet, I can by simply looking at their what you would call clothing understand somewhat more information about how they are being and perceiving in that moment. Mm, okay, interesting. Although I do not necessarily need it because I, we interface on more of a telepathic and non-language form. Uh -huh. But it does provide also a sense of fun and entertainment if you want. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how you wear your personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like humans wear clothes that they feel suits their personality. Mm -hmm. While in here, the clothes reflect your personality and your state of being. Oh, do they do that through color? Yes, primarily through color. Mm -hmm. There is also resonance and sound. Mm -hmm. Do they change color? Yes. Oh, wow. Depending on the state of being. And like what we would call a mood ring. Yes, very much like a mood ring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, what, what, do, what, um, what name do you go by? Ailai. Ailai? Yes. It's a beautiful name. And then what is the name of your planet? Uh, it begins with a B. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to put it into vowels mm -hmm. or consonants, as you say. Mm -hmm. And so you said that you're in our galaxy? It's within the 52 star cluster galaxy. The 52 star cluster galaxy, it starts with a B, okay. It is somewhat like the word, although not associated with this past president, somewhat like the word Barack. Uh-huh, okay. But there are more tones to it. More tones. It is a longer name. And do you, do you speak a different language? Or what is the language that you speak there? Mm, we do use tones. Because mm -hmm, I know you said you're more telepathic. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. We all use tones, but it's mostly telepathic. Mm -hmm. And the definition of telepathic is not just with the head. Mm. It is important to understand that telepathic communication is actually a convergence of the soul overriding. It is overriding the soul 
How should we say this? The soul is the primary communicator. And the soul, because our souls individually are so consciously aware that we are collective, that we are one, Mm -hmm. that the soul is primarily communicating with the soul. We do use tones, and as we have described, we use colors in our garb as well. But it is mostly frequency communication, and this communication combines the unification or the coherence of what humans would call the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is hard to explain because it is a multi-dimensional communication, Mm -hmm. but a lot of times when humans think of telepathy, telepathy, they think of simply mind to mind. Mm -hmm. And this is an element of it, but it is limited to think it is only coming from your brain. There's a heart coherence there as well. Yes, it is a soul connection. Yes, the soul is the primary. Mm -hmm. The heart and the brain Mm -hmm. are definitely primary factors, but it is also every cell in our physical body that is communicating. It is like every cell is singing Mm -hmm. the communication, and that is where you hear the tones. Mm. Okay, great. And so, say your name one more time. Aleluya. Aleluya. I think I said that right, the best I can. Yes. So tell me more about, um, now are you a future version of us here on Earth? No. No, but you are human-like. Yes, we are your cousins. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, tell me more about your planet and... The importance of us getting to communicate with you today. Our planet is very much like Earth if you were to think of it in comparison to other spherical beings or planets or stars or asteroids that are in the universe and other universes and multiverses. Mm-hmm. So in comparison they does have many Earth-like features. Mm-hmm. We have water, Mm -hmm. we have atmosphere, Mm -hmm. we have trees and plants, Mm -hmm. although how we work with our plants and communicate with them is like brothers and sisters or maybe distant relatives. There is a communication that is always occurring and yes we do have people who on our planet who specialize in caring and working with the plants. Mm -hmm. And we do have animal forms in many different kinds and varieties. And the animal forms, um, are they similar to ours or do they look slightly different or? If you were to see the animals on our planet, Mm -hmm. they would look like something out of sci-fi movies. Mm -hmm. You would still be able to recognize that there are aquatic species and land species, mammalian species, mm-hmm. all different kinds. Mm-hmm. And they have consciously chosen to be there. Mm-hmm. But they would look different from the ones you find on Earth. Mm, okay. Although it is important to know, because the issue of extinction and animal and plant extinction on Earth is such a prevalent issue and concern and has been for a while, And as I say this, there is a lot of chills going through the body. Mm -hmm. It is important to realize that some animals on Earth that are going through extinction events on Earth, that because of the way that information is carried through the field, Mm -hmm. that they can manifest and start on other planets. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that DNA, that that specific experiment to create those particular life beings that they do have of choice. And so we would say that in Earth terms, we have some refugees on our planet. Mm -hmm. Some animals that did used to inhabit planet Earth Earth and have gone extinct and are now chosen to recreate on our planet. And we consider them 
with no negative connotations like refugees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they are welcome on our planet. But the primary life forms of animals on our planet are not refugees from Earth. Mm. There are some. Do you, are, what do you eat there? Mm-hmm. There are specific plant species and they do provide sustenance to us and with conscious agreement and with gratitude and with an energetic exchange. This is primarily what we ingest. We do have liquids that we ingest as well. The liquids that we ingest are a combination of different substances. It fills our body with even more light. We would, in comparison to humans, eat and ingest very, very little because we have evolved to a point where the programs and resistance, the heaviness that humans experience on Earth has been so dramatically reduced that food and drink are not necessary to sustain and counterbalance all the energy that is needed to keep up the amount of energy that is needed on planet Earth. In addition, Mm -hmm. our planet has also gone through a massive transformation over many, 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 many eons ago. And because our planet is much lighter and the Earth is going through its own transition and evolution, Mm -hmm. then that means that our requirements are much less. Does this make sense? Yes, absolutely. So the elixir because that is probably the best word that we can use right now that we ingest. You would think of it, if you were to look at it and pour it, it would be have a multitude of colors, mostly in the range of white, maybe lavender, a little bit of gold and Mm -hmm. silver. Mm -hmm. It does have a a energy, a actual light emanating from it. Mm -hmm. So when you would pour it into a glass, let's say, Mm-hmm. It would look mm, a little like a thin shake or a thin smoothie, mm-hmm. a very thin protein drink, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the liquid and the light and the crystals, it would appear crystalline almost. Mm. And when it goes into our body, it infuses us. Sounds amazing. I, I can see it. I can see it. Um, I had a question. How tall are you? About seven feet. And what what does yeah you know, what does your what do your features and your skin and your body look like? And what what is the name of 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 the type of beings that you are? Do you have a name? Mm. Like we're called humans. We call ourselves humans too. We are been aware of you for a very long time. Mm-hmm. We just call ourselves the people. The people. Mm-hmm. And then um, your structure and your social structure, do you have government and things like that as we do here on this planet? Mm. Or how is the, how is the social, social, economic, cultural experience where you are? the best way I can put it. (laughs) We're only laughing because we knew this, you were going to ask about this next. (laughs) We live in communities in different parts of the planet. Mm -hmm. And each community has its own overriding function, Mm -hmm. has its own overriding goal, Mm -hmm. perhaps to grow these plants and lovingly harvest them, perhaps to work with the clothing, perhaps to work with the animal species on the planet, perhaps to go on to missions into the cosmos and work as representatives of our planet Mm -hmm. with other beings, Mm -hmm. perhaps to work in a telepathic way mm-hmm. with beings such as humans, those who are seeking to evolve. How did you know to communicate with us today? How, what did that look like? 
Who organized you guys to come and visit with us today? Well, you did, of course. We did how? Can you explain that more? Because of your interest and your desire to help and to serve, Mm -hmm. we wanted to make you aware of us so that you can call on us Mm. and ask us questions and we are available to you to help and to guide. Mm -hmm. Understanding that we are your cousins, Mm -hmm. that we have been through and experienced very similar things Mm -hmm. to what you are currently going through. Mm -hmm. Of course, all different on some levels. Mm But you feel that you have somewhat of an older brother and older sisters available to help and aid you. Mm -hmm. And to also show you the potential, have you experienced the potential for what a quote-unquote new earth could feel like because so many people have speculated on this with the coming solar sneezes and solar flares, although they have already started to happen, even if There is no brilliant flash yet. Do not underestimate the fact that these have already been occurring and intensifying over this month of March. There has been a question about whether the solar flash was the prediction of it being in March was erroneous. And we would say no, that the frequencies are so high and they were already coming in and affecting those who are ready and even those who are not, they are still affecting them in a different way too yeah yes that I can I I understand that so yes thank you I can get that um what is the dimension that you guys are in or you're in the fifth dimension Mm -hmm. and how old are you Mm, in your terms 300 years Mm -hmm. approximately and is that old or young in your in your lifespan middle aged middle aged wow so you live about 600 700 years if we choose to yes we have a conscious mm-hmm. ability to transition anytime we want mm-hmm. what is the overall lesson or purpose on that planet in body, while embodying that 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 um, way of life and, and being this if you have the consciousness to be able to leave at any time what did, why would one go there to experience life mm-hmm. well part of it is that to experience conscious harmony and love and community and to celebrate each other mm-hmm. earlier you were talking about fun Mm-hmm. And that is one very small way to describe what it is like to be in a physical form and to work together in communities, Mm -hmm. both in people communities with other life forms, plants, animals, our planet. Mm -hmm. And to also do this and be of service to others on other planets and other stages of their growth. Mm -hmm. It is simply the joy of expressing the divine through form, which is truly all of form. Mm. The purpose of all of form from our perspective is the the joy of experiencing the creator, the creator experiencing itself through form and the joy of that, the unfolding. So we do not come and reincarnate back onto our planet for a purpose of trying to work through something or resolve or figure something out. Mm -hmm. It's It's fun. (laughs) Simply for the joy of it, Mm -hmm. for sharing, for supporting others, for what that is like, and supporting others both on our planet and off. We have, we were saying earlier, there are some communities that have a variety of different purposes, one of them, as we were sharing, is for mm, delegations to go and work with other mm, forms, Mm -hmm. humanoid and Mm non-humanoid, and we want to make the distinction that there is another community then that uh, interfaces telepathically with 
others, meaning a group that would then telepathically communicate with humans who are not necessarily in 3D positions of power. Mm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. There is an important distinction because sometimes people feel the need that if they are going to meet an extraterrestrial, they have to meet the delegates, the United Nations spokespeople, Mm -hmm. who are going to other planets or universes to represent their collective consciousness, and this is important. But there's also other groups that are simply in a different kind of service, no better, no worse, interfacing with people on those various planets who reach out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more thing that is important for today's session for you to understand about our society is that our people can move freely between these different communities. Mm. That they may choose, they may have a specialty and may be working, or what you would call work, mm-hmm. you would not call it that, mm-hmm. in one area, in one community, and then decide to go and serve in another one. And there is no problem. Yeah, no, so there are no boundaries. There are no boundaries in one way right and yet there are consequences if you decide to make a shift and go work in another or serve in another capacity Mm. there are always consequences but we do not see them as good or bad Mm -hmm. so that i know krista can see you so that i may have an image and we can record it what what do you look like what color eyes do you have your hair your features. As we said, our skin is rather tannish. Mm-hmm. It does have a slightly lavender hue to it. Mm-hmm. Our eyes, you would say, are mostly lavender. Mm-hmm. Our skin, I mean our hair, it varies. It is usually tan or lavender, mm-hmm. sometimes black. Mm-hmm. There's I- some variation in that. I've been told that there is a variation of a gray that is that is our our relative or cousins. Would you is that a, is that a structure or mold that you would fit into in terms of that? When I've heard that definition that we do have a lineage of grays, given that you're the tannish lavender. Yes, although our eyes are not as fearful as they are portrayed. Yes, I would imagine. We do not have a fearful look or energy or beingness, but yes, that is because our foreheads are rather large, although we do have hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's disappointing that we've created such a fearful mm, understanding of how a gray looks. I, I do see them very differently today now as I continue my journey of studies, but unfortunately, yes, there is that fear factor that we've created here. So I have a question about, um, oh, and then what, how do you guys travel? Do you use, how do you travel? Mm-hmm. We can travel in a variety of different ways. There are portals on our planet. Mm. If we are traveling off planet, We can simply use the portals. We do have craft that we can use on our planet. They are, mm, they can be used, although we do have the ability to portal ourselves around the planet Mm -hmm. individually Mm -hmm. and collectively. Mm -hmm. The, mm, the soles on the bottoms of our feet that mm-hmm. you first described yes. are part of that. Mm, okay. It is not, um, the souls are not meant to keep us separate from the earth or the planet, whatever you want to, the ground. Mm-hmm. They are, mm, again, part of similar to what we described in what we wear, and that it is a consciousness of itself. Mm-hmm. And so it is part of the technology that we use. So we set our intention of where we are going. Mm-hmm. And then we go ahead and we focus our energies on that. 
and the material on the bottom of our feet is kind of like an interactive craft that oh. then helps us transport. Interesting. And when you do transport, is it kind of, um, I hate to use the term like Star Trek, like you just kind of dissipate and then move to some place? Yes. Or do you actually, okay, okay, good. That's, yes. Wow, that's interesting. There's a reason why all of those sci-fi movies were made. They were yeah. information that was being given. Absolutely, they are. Absolutely. And children, so you mentioned about um, that you particularly bear children. Is, is that a choice? Do you need an opposite sex to create it, or is it something that you can just manifest and create? Uh, mm, we can... We can actually do it either way. Mm. So if we have the desire Mm -hmm. to have what you would call a family structure or a family unit, then we can create that Mm -hmm. and procreate in a different way than humans do. But there is the merging of energies. Because we are already balanced in the masculine and feminine, we do not require it. But we find that finding what we would call a member who of the opposite quote-unquote sex mm-hmm. and merging our energies to create a new life form mm-hmm. is a wonderful creative project. We yeah. have a very different structure, however, than you do here on Earth, and we do not necessarily have the sense of needing to have just one single family. Mm. And we can have different mates and different families and support all at the same time because of how our communities and society is structured, we are all inclusive and supportive of each other. This information would be very disturbing for most people, most humans on earth, because they would not understand this is not what humans would call polygamy, because everybody is consciously participating or not participating if they so choose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, all of us have a conscious awareness of how we want to contribute Mm -hmm. and there is no judgment or right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I guess, um, I'm just trying to manage time and I feel like I have a lot of questions, but the, the one thing I'd like to ask in terms of, you know, sharing the content that we are getting this, honorable opportunity to speak with you what are the most important things that you would want to share with with humanity here in regards to all that we are currently shifting through like what have you already gone through that would support us in understanding and knowing on what we are embarking on does that make sense Mm, yes Mm -hmm. Understand that there are other planets and other beings and people like you Mm -hmm. that have already gone through this transition. Mm -hmm. Of course, each one is unique and different and beautiful and wondrous in its own way. But there is a real sense of how are we going to do this? What is it going to be like? Will it ever happen? Will it not happen? It is similar to before you become a parent. If you think about the time before you were a parent Mm -hmm. and you think, will I become a parent? Mm -hmm. What will it be like? And you can imagine and pretend and have in your mind what it would be like. Mm -hmm. And until you have the actual experience, you do not know what it is like. Unless, of course, you have access to past life memories or mm, information that you download from the field, that aside. Right. Right. And so the thing to know is that before you became a parent, you knew for a fact that there were already millions and millions and millions and billions of parents out there, not only in current time, but in past time, (laughs) and also in future time. You knew that even though you were felt like you were going through the experience alone, you were not in fact. That there is a network of parents out there, past, present, future, And all you needed to do is to tap into that Mm -hmm. and feel that support. Mm. And if necessary, reach out and ask for help. Mm -hmm. And that is what is important to know. Everybody is talking about the new earth and what is going to happen. And everybody can have their own mm, ideas and expectations. The thing to remember is 
to reach out and understand that there are many, many, many other planets and peoples that have gone through similar transitions. And to simply extend your awareness and your mind and to find that community out there that is already bringing in so much love and support, saying, we know, we have been there. Mm -hmm. We have you. We love you. We are here to support you. Right. Removing some of that fear and that hesitation. And just like if you have ever been pregnant, which you have, mm -hmm. you know, oh, when is the baby going to be born? Today, 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 <laughs> today. And then eventually one day it happens and the baby is born and then you realize you are no longer pregnant. Yes. So enjoy the pregnancy. <laughs> and that's definitely an event. <laughs> it is a definitely an event. Yes. One painful event. <laughs> yes. But mm -hmm. very, very, you know, and that's a great analogy because when you think about it, there is a pain to it, but is, there is also this euphoric experience, and then it's just, it's amazing on the other side, like that much more. So, wow, that was a great analogy. Um, I know I had another question. Hmm. Do you, okay, I'll just go back to a couple other questions I had because I had another question, but I, I probably should write them down as they pop into my head. Um, do you have oceans? Yes. Yes, okay. And then do you have, you know, and I'm, I'm imagining and understanding like the love of life and the, just the love of being there. Do you have like what we have here in the, um, the entertainment, the industries of entertainment, or is it is it different in the in regards to that? There's just communities that are sustainable and uh, living with the land and off of the land, if that makes sense. Or is there all this? Uh, I guess what we call it here, consumerism and marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Does that exist where you live? No, that type is not exist where we live anymore, mm -hmm. although it did before, mm -hmm. before we went through our own ascension. Mm -hmm. Now we do have entertainment, we mm -hmm. do have communities getting together and creating, mm -hmm. but the way we do, you would probably consider more tribal. Mm -hmm. We have the different communities coming together and sharing and creating, mm -hmm. dancing and playing. Mm -hmm that love, that celebration of life for mm -hmm. us. It is way more fun and entertaining and brings us great joy more than going to a slot machine or sitting and passively watching a TV show. Mm -hmm. But we do not judge you for that because we have been there and we understand absolutely why those forms of entertainment are there. Mm -hmm. But we have moved to a place, and this is why we hold this energy for you, meaning all of you on earth, where the greatest form of entertainment is to gather together and share mm -hmm. all the different unique perspectives and joys and loves and talents. Mm. In a sort of celebration, we can get together and we can actually create what you would call fireworks from our collective intention. We gather together and create fireworks in the sky, and it is like doing a kind of Jackson Pollock painting in the mm -hmm, sky mm -hmm. all together, and that combined with the tones, the tonalities that we all simultaneously, or in little groups while others watch, that we all manifest and create and burst out of us. Mm. This may be a better way, mm -hmm. but that brings us so much joy together. Mm. So we still gather and celebrate and share. Right. Um, it is different, however. We also don't require much sleep or what you would call sleep or resting time. Mm -hmm. Again, for the reasons discussed prior about food. But yes. We do not have pollution or industry, but we do, as we have mentioned previously, all have different skills and um, different communities have different focuses and of course we share those resources between the different communities freely and easily. Mm -hmm. 
We are still learning, of course, and exploring our own manifestations of all of this. Mm -hmm. But we have a deep respect and honor and love for all the transitions that humans are going through so rapidly right now as those old structures and systems including pollution mm -hmm. including industry including gross mm, contamination mm -hmm. not only environmentally but also of the mind mm -hmm. and of the body mm -hmm. and we understand that this transition is happening very quickly and the challenges with this but yes there is definitely earth can transform and the people on it can transform to these kinds of states of being does yeah. this make sense yes i'm so excited um which brings me back to the question i had thought about um you know the event you know it, it i had recently spoken with a group myself uh elders of the light which i'm sure you're familiar with that they said there's so many of us waiting, you know, that, that we're waiting. And what I realize is that in that waiting, we actually should just be living as if it has already happened because in that waiting, is it true that we actually create this block, this, um, we slow the process down? And it's almost as if we should just, like you're saying, enjoy the pregnancy and you just keep living as if it's, we are moving into it, we are already there. Yes, that is true. That is absolutely true. Because when you are pregnant, you still have the baby inside of you. The baby still at that point has its own heartbeat, its own brain, mm -hmm. its own consciousness, its own energy. Mm -hmm. You and the baby are, are in effect already one and yet already two. And to expect what is going to happen next and waiting and waiting and waiting and then the event happens and then suddenly you are no longer pregnant and then you long to be pregnant again because then all of a sudden you remember how beautiful and wonderful it was to be in that pregnancy state. Mm -hmm. So yes, in effect, multidimensionally, mm -hmm. it has already happened mm -hmm. because there is no time, all time is now. Mm -hmm. This has already happened. Mm -hmm. And so to instead of the anticipation enjoy the pregnancy mm -hmm. and also understand that these solar blasts have already started happening mm -hmm. not figuratively we are talking about literally mm -hmm. the fact that it is not in the news does not make any difference <laughs> it is actually being measured by some people on the earth they just don't want to make it the news they consciously choose not to make it the news Yes, and I do want to ask about that, and you'll probably, I'm putting a vision in my mind right now, because I don't know if Krista has seen it. They did just see this beautiful mm, celestial orb-like structure that was floating over uh, California and I think parts of Arizona. Was that, and, and they posted it on Fox News, and they're like, if anybody knows what this is, but it was this beautiful orb in these just iridescent colors was that in fact a spacecraft or was that aspects of this solar wind do you know that answer it is a um mm, it uh interesting it is uh part of the new guardians of the planet mm. it mm -hmm. is um it is life forms that have come here to serve and to help mm -hmm. and it is infused with some of the energies and some of the um, solar energies, mm -hmm. but it is really more mm, a collective of the guardians, mm -hmm. those who have come here to serve in addition to all those mm -hmm. who are also serving, mm -hmm. the guardians, as well as being infused with these mm, solar energies. Mm -hmm. So it is serving both purposes. Mm -hmm. It is not strictly one or the other. It is definitely not strictly just solar energy mm -hmm. it was beautiful it was actually magnificent and then um oh i gotta write these things down i'm trying to listen to you and questions go flying by um solar wind the events interrupt if you remember your question that is fine with us yes 
The solar events that will happen mm -hmm. continue to happen. Mm -hmm. um, understand that there will be a series of them and will continue to be a series of them. Mm -hmm. It is like a continual initiation. And so the the um, thought that is going to be one great flash, yes, there will be that. However, do not underestimate all of the ones that come prior to that in linear time. Mm -hmm. Because those are all also changing all of your DNA, changing all of your frequencies, upgrading all of your mind and bodies, mm -hmm. and also helping to cleanse anything that needs to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. I remembered my question. Um, and thank you for sharing that because it sparked that. Um, so there's been some new disclosure about how they've always known that there are billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of galaxies and several Earth-like planets that are inhabitable. And so will we continue to see, and I don't know if you'll know this answer, but will we continue to see that unfold and in fact find out that, you know, there are um, so many of you actually very nearby, very close? Yes, that information came out as part of the preparatory phase mm -hmm. for releasing more information about contact with other human life beings. Mm -hmm. And and um, how often do you guys enter enter you know your travel amongst other places? Is that a common theme that you go back and forth to other galaxies or planets? Yes, that those communities, or that is their purpose and their intention to serve. Yes, they mm -hmm. do that regularly. Okay, and that's what you were saying earlier too. Okay, um, let me just look at time here. So I know, um, for time's sake, I know we, we would like to continue asking questions. And should we continue with our questions through you, or would it be best to go ahead and call in our council and higher selves, or is everybody here as a collective today? Everybody is here as a collective. Okay, so we'll continue on. And so I want to go ahead and go into...